Hi and welcome back. Okay, uh, leading on from the mating of the wing spars themselves, I've just disassembled both those spars obviously now. I've only got one sitting up here on the workbench. Uh, and I've just temporarily uh, assembled the differences in the ribs that, that are going into this wing build themselves. Namely the first four ribs, the root rib and the aileron rib that has the, the aileron bell cranks that go onto one of the ribs back here, number nine location or something along those lines that I've done. So I'm just going through the set out process in my head because it's going to get a little bit tight around here when you're riveting and a little bit tight when you're around here in respect to upsizing and um, final deburring and, and stuff like that. So, and a good example of that is the wing uh, root rib. Uh, and I'm sort of glad that I didn't bolt all this angle off both in, in, as it finished against the spar now, uh, because I will be pulling it apart and, and, and taking it off and finishing it off the aeroplane and putting it back on. But I'll go through that more, more in, in when it comes to that part of the build. So the first four ribs, I've been through the drawings this morning and looked at the first four ribs that are different, both nose and aft rib, how they attach to the main spar. There's a, a little gusset plate that has to be bent up. Um, or a gusset plate, yeah, I suppose you call it a gusset plate or a, or, a, or a reinforcing plate of some description that has to be bent, uh, attached to the ribs, both top and bottom. Uh, both of those two components are different uh, and um, I'll do all that this morning, bend them up on the bender down the back shed. Then I'm going to come back and pull all this apart. At some stage I'm going to clean what I can on the main spar, clean it completely up uh, with the mounting blocks where I've drilled the half inch holes through, get any of the oil residue that's caught between it, deburr it properly, um, reassemble it back on uh, with some primer against the mating surfaces, torque it up properly, it's done. Uh, and then I can set the jig up. At the moment I've just got the jig set up. I've just put a temporarily, I haven't checked it for level this way, I'll be using the cord line of the wing section or the, or the actual aerofoil section. I'll be using the cord line. There's a couple of little holes in there I can use as a level line through um, for this way. And then I'll just simply level these two points, both forward and aft, or the root and the tip on either end and level it up through here. I'll probably only have two points of contact. I don't know that it's necessary to have three. I may do three. Uh, points of contact, that there's no hard and fast rule how I'm going to do that. Um, then I will then make up the jig, uh, it's very similar to what Gavin and, and um, um, I think, uh, I don't know if Dan did that or not, I, I think he did, there was a little bit of a, a level uh, on top of two blocks, the blocks were of differing, differing sizes to give you a, a transfer of the cord line above, so you can just double check that it's level. Now. Once you make up a jig, it's not going anywhere. So if I technically, in theory, make up a jig that is that is right, and, and I position this wing on that jig the same each and every time, whether it's got a sheet on at the top and bottom, it should be true. Uh, and, and, you know, there's no, no need to probably level across there after you do that. These wings, it's imperative that these wings don't have a twist to it, which goes without saying. Um, so if I've got a level line through here and a level line through the back and I check that, then I do a level between here and here and a level between here and here, it's, it's, it's fine. So waffling again as usual, so let's go across to the drawings and have a look how the different gussets go with each of the first four ribs. Okay, so just looking at these rib uh, gussets, so we've got uh, the Ford rib assembly number one. So nose rib number one, two, three, uh, sorry, four and three. So one, two, start again, one, two, three and four. So these are the little components that we're talking about here. So these little guys here. So what I've done is I've just drawn on, I've been through the drawings and I've written down on that. That's a nose rib two, uh, number two, that's right top. Number one, right top, and I've just put my little notes on it to how I will be orientating these against the actual ribs themselves. So I've got to look at the drawing now, and so let's take a look at sort of something like this one for an example. 
Um, this one gets bent up and this one gets bent that way. So on the drawing here, it's not real clear. There should be a little dotted line, I'm guessing, along here like that to show the back of that rib when it's built that way or this little gusset. It doesn't show it on this drawing, but it does show it on this drawing here. See, there's the little... So you, you know that you're bending it up against the actual flange at the back of the actual rib itself. So anyway, how about I get, get to bending these and we'll see what it looks like in a few hours. Talk with you soon. Okay, just starting to set up the jig now. Uh, the center of these three holes that you may recall that I drilled through when mating the wings uh, is the wing cord reference line. So I've just drawn that now on the wing spars. Okay, so there's the uh, cord line reference and I've just transferred the line up on top of the spar at the moment and you'll see my laser level that runs all the way through the cords on the wings themselves, on the actual aerofoil shape itself. So I have just set this jig up now and I have packed it, run the reference line all the way through to the end. So there's the reference line through here. So you can see it running all the way through those cord lines. So technically speaking, if I've now run the laser level through all of these, uh, these reference lines on the on the actual aerofoil shape itself this rear spar and that top spar should now be level running let's call it east west so north south is done with the laser level and east west is done with the uh, little tiny if I can find him it's around here somewhere here he is this little guy here so let's uh, give it a whirl and see what it looks like Okay, we'll just try the inclinometer. Zero, zero. Point one. Am I going to get it any better than point one? Probably not. Well, that will do me. Up to here. Point one. Zero, zero. Well, I can live with that, I guess. It's not that bad. All right, let's run with that. Okay, I've done the laser line set out as part of my jig process. Uh, the jig is now fully set up and 
I've just got a few reference lines on here just to double check it. And I, I fully understand too that um, I'll have a second bite of the cherry when the sheets go on, which will give me another little bit of a reference line. But um, at the moment, I have now set it up. So I've just done my 19 inch cord line back to here, which is the reference line for the rear spar fixing point. I've run the laser level down the apex of this wing spar which runs all the way through to the wing tip. So if I take my little laser line pickup, it should be center. Hopefully this will be, you know, I don't know if you can actually see that line on there, but uh, I'll just take this camera off the tripod and I'll show you closer. Okay, so just the reference line, you can just see that reference line there, so that's right on the cord where I want it. Sorry, not the cord, the um, longitudinal light along the wing spar, so I'm happy with that set out. I've just put that extra rib number 9 in just to give it stability along the back rear spar. And I think if you sort of like look down there now, you can see that it's nice and straight. And nice and straight up through there. So uh, that's my wing uh, structure set, set out. I will go ahead and start throwing some ribs in. Talk with you soon. Welcome back. Okay, I've spent uh, most of yesterday preparing the, the remainder of the aft ribs uh, in the jig. And now I started on the nose ribs. Uh, one through four in particular, that's uh, excluding the uh, wing root rib. I've uh, upsized all these with copper clecos now, so and primed the surfaces. I will now do the aft side and prime the surfaces as well, after upsizing of course, and, and proceed with riveting these in spot now, excluding through the spar itself. I'll probably follow um, Gavin's lead, I think, I think he sort of left that a little bit late and, and worked out when the best time to do that. Uh, when that is, I don't know yet. Uh, it gets fairly tight inside here, so you're gonna need one of these really long drill bits or the six inch length uh, drill bits to get inside here. When I say it's tight, this Clico is going in all directions, so um, yeah, it's very, very, uh, very tight. So I'm gonna work on uh, the remainder of the aft ribs this morning, paint those up. Uh, probably reinstall my mounting blocks now that I've primed them all up, the tie down bracket, and slowly progressively work my way through on this wing. It is to try to get either either clecos in or uh, rivets in. So this is hence why I'm going to be probably deburring all of these. Well, not probably, I will be deburring all of these and actually fixing them off with rivets now and just leaving the the rivets down this side, uh, down the, through the actual spar itself. So you can actually see it's quite, quite tight in here for the first sort of, at least three. Here's your root rib here. And then by the time you get to, to root, uh, to rib number four, it starts to become easier as you work the way through. So uh, I'll get on and start uh, preparing these aft ribs this morning and um, come back in a few hours. Talk with you soon. Ready to start riveting these nose ribs and aft uh, ribs. So uh, let's get the rivet gun out and start riveting.
Okay, I have set the right wing out, I believe. I have copper clearcoat forward and aft spar tunnel. Uh, well, I've, uh, sorry, I've copper clearcoat all of the aft spar and the forward spar, both at nose and aft ribs are all now copper clearcoat. I have not done the bell crank yet. I've got the upright supports. Uh, I have lost the bushings somewhere in this mess. Uh, I don't know where they've gone, but uh, I'm assuming it's only a very tiny little packet, so I'll have to be ordering some more of those uh, from Sonics through the week. I have riveted the first four ribs, both aft and forward nose ribs, with the gussets on now, top and bottom. So I think this is pretty much ready to try the uh, the top side uh, aft sheet. So let's give that a whirl and see what it looks like. Okay, just positioned uh, the top side sheet just to give it a bit of a whirl to see what it's like. Now I'm unsure whether the sheet is actually supposed to go flush with the front end of the spar. On the drawing it shows it, but um, you know, unless you really clamp that in tight, I mean it's nice, it's parallel, it's uh, nothing wrong with it, it's lining up with the ribs. But it just, uh, if anyone can let me know it is supposed to or it's not supposed to, that's what it looks like. Anyway, I'll close this off, I think, and um, give it some thought and uh, talk with you next weekend. With you soon.